Greetings. I hope uh, studying for your exam is going well. You all probably have should have organized your groups and um, are working together. I just want to reiterate a couple things before jump into a quick lecture that will hopefully help distinguish uh, some of the questions for the exams for you, but also um, just bring some of the readings together. And so, um, yeah, one of the questions that keeps coming up is um, I mentioned that you can converse over email, you can use a forum or slash discussion in Canvas, or you can make a Google Doc. Uh, however you, whatever is easiest for you to communicate, that's the platform that I want you to use. Just include me. So if you have an email thread going, um, then include me on the email thread. Or if you have a Google Doc, invite me to the Google Doc. Um, the best address to invite me to the Google Doc actually is uh, either my fuller address Ron Sanders, no dot between Ron and Sanders, um, Ron Sanders at fuller.edu, or at my crew email address, um, which is ron.sanders at crew.org. Um, uh, if you invite me via my Stanford email address, uh, there's some complications with that with Stanford. So, um, yeah, and remember that there will be, you know, just feel free to ask questions if you have any questions along the way. Okay. Um, let me make some distinctions because when we're talking about pacifism and just war theory, um, we need to make some careful distinctions here and um, and begin to define a little more carefully what we're doing and what we're talking about. So when we talk about pacifism, Richard Hayes in his book Moral Vision of the New Testament says this quote: "The overwhelming preponderance of evidence of the New Testament is against the use of violence." The cross, the community of faith, and the new creation, his three focal points of his ethical method, points to a kingdom that does not use violence to, to accomplish its ends, even if it's just ends. Um, and you find uh, in The War of the Lamb and, and Glenn Stassen's book, um, both, argue, uh, both argue that the early church was marked by its commitment to nonviolence. Until the Constantinian Compromise, which we talked about in the um, in the Five Dates in History lecture, um, when the gospel was wedded with the empire, August, Augustine and uh, and Ambrose uh, were theologians for the Roman Empire, and they basically um, were beginning to argue that um, when the where the gospel goes, the empire goes, and where the empire goes, the gospel goes, and so we need to fight. Um, uh, we need to fight. If we're going to do violence, we need to fight with uh, just war principles. So uh, pacifism is anchored in the teachings of Jesus, especially the wow. Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew 5, 38 through 48, we're called to love one's right. enemies. Um, and then I ha I've had you read these particular books on this issue because right. most of us have been anchored in just war theory, especially if you grew up in the West or if you grew up in America. Um and so uh, this is a challenge to kind of our natural assumptions about the use of violence to accomplish um, just ends. Uh, so yeah, I, this is why I um, had you read these particular books, because most of us uh, at least are familiar with just war theory, um, not as familiar with the arguments for pacifism. So let me uh, distinguish four types of pacifism, and you... Um, saw this in the Just War Divide uh, book and in Feinberg and Fein or Just War Divide article by David Gushy and the Feinberg and Feinberg book, Brave Ethics for a Brave New World, the chapter. Um, so four kinds of pacifism. Universal pacifism, all violence is always wrong. And an example of that is uh, Gandhi. He's an advocate for universal pacifism. The second kind of pacifism is Christian pacifism. Christians are not allowed to use killing or violence. Unbelievers can participate in the government government's mandate to punish evil by the power of the sword, um, but Christians are not allowed to do that. And this would probably be uh, Yoder, Hauerwas, and Hayes. Uh, this is this is probably their um, viewpoint. The third kind of pacifism is private pacifism. Uh, this is where personal violence is always wrong, but a nation may at times be justified justified in using force or violence to protect itself. And that was uh, Augustine's view. And then finally, the fourth one is just a flip or the alternative to that one, and it's anti-war pacifism. P 
personal violence may be justified. That is, if somebody broke into your house and was threatening your family, your children, or yourself, you may be justified to do violence to them to protect your family. Um, but war is never justified. So those are four um, four different kinds of pacifisms, and sometimes we need to distinguish those when we're having this conversation about uh, the intersection of just war theory, peacemaking, and pacifism. Okay, so uh, there's also two important distinctions that um, we need to talk about with just war theory, especially after 9-11, where in uh, his book, God's Politics, oh no, sorry, Politics According to the Bible by Wayne Grudem, he argues for a hard just war theory where preemptive war um, is just. And so, um, and this is uh, in response to 9-11 and terrorism. And so uh, David Gushy in his, um, in his article distinguishes two kinds of just war theory. Soft just war theory um, is a recent development of just war theory after the proliferation of nuclear weapons. So soft just war theory after the proliferation of nuclear weapons, the horror of war, the impact and the consequences of war are so great with the nuclear war that there is a presumption against war at all costs. There is a skepticism because all governments claim to be uh, going to war with just war principles, um, even though they don't fit the criteria. Um, just war theory on the soft just war theory view is a prophetic critique. It's using it to call the government to account, not to justify a war. In other words, you're, um, you're using the criteria to caution the government against going to war, not to justify the government going to war. Um, soft just war theorists tend to trust in international treaties. Uh, they tend to trust in multilateral strategies, not unilateral strategies for solving conflict. Um, they are the most stringent ap application of just war theory um, and all of its principles, which, which we'll get to the principles of just war theory in, in just a moment. And if I could sum this, sum this view up, so our, uh, soft just war theory, there's a common presumption against the use of force as a means of settling disputes. And basically, what soft just war theory turns out to look like is some kind of uh, pacifism or nonviolent. Examples of soft just war theorists might be Jim Wallace, uh, Glenn Stashin, or David Gushy. Okay, uh, the second kind of just war theory is hard just war theory. Hard just war theory is uh, a presumption against injustice and disorder rather than against war. Um, in, in contrast to soft just war theory. War is a tragic but inevitable task of the government in a fallen world. As a consequence of sin, there will always be conflict and there will always be wars. And so we need to have a theory to um, moderate that with just principles. Just war theory is a tool to aid policymakers and military personnel. It's a tool to guide our uh, movement into war. Um, hard just war theorists tend to distrust international treaties because everybody has uh, some political angle that they're coming to those treaties with, and they downplay multilateral coalitions. Uh, they especially downplay the United Nations, hard just war theorists. There's less stringent application of just war principles, which include uh, and add uh, preemptive war um, if there's immediate threat and it's justified. Um, there's no common ground here with Christian pacifists at all. Um, and if I could sum this one up, um, each individual nation state is justified in protecting its uh, citizens' interests, and war and violence is one alternative to fill its God-given mandate. Um, and this is just my comment. Any war that the United States enters or initiates, um, according to this view, is a just war. And I... Again, example of this is Wayne Grudem in his book, um, Politics According to the Bible. Okay, let's talk about war just a little bit um, more. The impact of terrorism, especially terrorism, there's always been terrorism, um, but when uh, September 11th happened, uh, this brought terrorism to our, um, our land in America, and it became a, a serious um, thing that we wanted to talk about. Um, when it was in other countries, it was tragic, but 
it's always when it impacts you, that's when you really want to talk about it. Um, September 11th became a fulcrum for defining our ethic of war. And uh, we work in a politics of fear. We always work in a politics of fear, but after 9-11, this was even escalated. And of course, Jesus, one of the most common commands that he gives to us is to not be afraid. Um, because we, But the unique thing is, as Christians especially, we can't erase our vulnerability um, to other people. But fear is always a bad way to make ethical decisions. And so we want some Christian realism in the face of fear that can be an alternative. So we, as Christians, we try to protect ourselves, do the best that we can, but we have to trust God in our vulnerabilities. Um, and we have a greater hope in this world than the government. We're always small sea citizens in any kingdom, any nation state, while we're big sea citizens in the kingdom of God, and that takes precedent. Um, when we respond to terror, we need to name it for what it is. It's evil. Uh, terror is a justification of taking innocent lives for an ideological or political purpose. And that's always wrong, whether it's uh, done during war or in times of peace. Um, we want to respond strongly and wisely to the terrorists. And uh, we want to apply the Sermon on the Mount in looking at ourselves, taking the log out of our own eye before we take the speck out of somebody else's eye. And we want to, as uh, Glenn said in in his book, Peacemaking Book, um, we want to drain the swamps of injustice so we eliminate the, uh, the injustices that people feel that cause them to commit these acts of terror. One thing to know about um, Glenn's argument is that when he argues that after 9-11, after our response to 9-11, that the acts of terrorism went up, um, one thing to be cautious about, he overstates that. Because after 9-11, what happened is the government redefined the definition of terrorism. And so it automatically went up uh, because the definition got broader. It included more acts. And so his argument that because of our response to 9-11, terrorism went up is a little overstated. There may be some evidence that that happened, um, that that galvanized some terrorists, but it's also that we changed the definition of terrorism. And so that's uh, that caused a spike um, in the number of terrorist uh, uh, acts that were counted. Okay. Um, let's see. I think I'll stop there and I'll, I'll do one more quick lecture on just war theory and the criteria of just war theory because I think that'll be helpful for your exam.